I again. We've all had it happen. Trying to save time by not doing something actually ends up in the long run costing us time. Growing food is no different. Saving time by not regularly checking up on your plants will end up costing you time as you try and revive plants on the brink of death. And if you're too late, you may need to go to the garden center or nursery to buy more plants, not only wasting time, but also money. But how do you keep on top of your plants' needs? Not by sitting on the couch dreaming of your amazing harvest. Instead, make it a habit of being proactive and check your plants daily or every few days. I call these garden walks, and these may be very short if you have just a few containers on your balcony or patio, or it could be a little longer if you have a garden my size in an urban backyard. So let's actually go on a short walk through my garden so I can show you what to look for. So the first step is we're gonna check to see what kind of things we can harvest. And using a harvest basket like this is a good idea. So you can collect everything. And the first thing I'm gonna look for is some fallen fruit like this apple. And we'll pick that one up so it doesn't rot on us. And our bush beans are ripening and let's have a look and see. I'm gonna pick a few of these guys. Probably can't see much because of all the leaves here, but there we go, there's one. And we'll pick a few more. If you have a lot, you may wanna do this a bit later. There's another one. All right. The thing to kind of keep an eye on are these kind of dead leaves here, like on the zucchini. We want to actually take that away because that can introduce rot and uh, disease. The other thing to look out for is for things like tomatoes and make sure that your tomatoes are, are well staked and uh, you've tied them off. We may want to actually tie this one on and maybe tie it a little bit higher up make sure it doesn't fall over over the weight of the tomatoes. You also want to have a look for bugs uh, especially aphids and uh, have a look under the leaves and in case you see any if you've got a spray bottle of soapy water you can spray that on the leaves and that'll help control them. You can also do a light weeding in case you find anything in your garden. You won't have time to do a really heavy weeding, but if you keep it up, then uh, you won't really have to do a heavy weeding. Check your containers to see if uh, they're getting dry, and if so, if you've got a watering can with you, just give them a quick water. You won't be able to do heavy watering this way, but if you've missed something, it's a good idea to give them a little bit of water. While you're at your tomato plant, you can also give them a quick shake on the trusses especially where the flowers are, that'll help to uh, pollinate them. And speaking of pollination, you can actually use a paintbrush like this one to get pollen from the inside of the male flowers of your squash and other fruiting vegetables. And if you can find a female one, which I can't right now, I would then dab it into the female flower. Sometimes hand pollination is needed to uh, get everything to pollinate properly for any rodent or mammal damage. Um, I've got raccoons here that are digging around in my garden so um, any holes that they make kind of close them up again and if you have uh, constant problems then you may have to just sort of fence off some areas so that they can't get at them. Check any raised beds that you have or any other garden structures to make sure that there's no damage on them. Things like making sure that everything is firmly screwed together. You might have to get a screw and a screwdriver to kind of make some temporary repairs or make a list of stuff that you need to do when you have a little bit more time. And you may want to take the time and actually make some photos of your garden and uh, share on social media or with friends. Things like this beautiful kabocha, for instance, we might want to make a photo of and share. Finally, you may want to write in your garden journal and write down some things about your garden that you need to keep in mind for next year, perhaps or write down how much you've harvested, or you can even write a gratitude journal entry. And that's it. Depending on how much uninterrupted time you have, you can split these tasks up into more than one time period during the day, or do these on different days. So long you do them, 
and don't leave too much time between as that's when plants get neglected and die. Have a great day and all the best.